This is an excellent example to do in trying to find the mean mu and the standard deviation sigma of a normal distribution. What we've got here is the weight y grams of soup put into a carton by machine B is normally distributed with mean mu grams and standard deviation sigma grams. And we're given that the probability that y is less than 160 is equal to 0.99 and the probability y is greater than 152 is equal to 0 0.90. And what we've got to do then is find the value of the mean mu and the value of the standard deviation sigma. Now if you'd like to have a go at this just pause the video and come back when ready and you can check through the work solution. But if this has been giving you trouble this is how I would go about it. First of all I would always encourage you to draw a couple of graphs something like this one over the other. One for the distribution in this case y. y is normally distributed we're told with a mean mu and variance sigma squared the standard deviation then squared. And underneath this graph I would draw what is called the standardized distribution z. It has a mean of 0 and a standard deviation of 1. Now on this graph I would put the mean mu which we've got to find. Now we need to put on also this data that we've got up here. We're told that the probability of y being less than 160 is 0.99. Now I know that 160 then must go over to the right of the mean mu. This is 160. I know that because remember the whole area under the graph must come to 1. So the area to the left, 0.99, 99%, must mean that 160 is over on the right hand side here. Okay, because we've shaded more than half the curve. But it's worthwhile putting in then this area here if that's 99% or 0.99 that way then this area here must be 0.01. Now similarly we can look at the probability of y is greater than 152. It's 0.90. And that means that 152 must be on this side, the left hand side of mu. Because we know that the area to the right of it has got to be 90% or 0.90 and clearly this is more than half the graph that is shaded if we go to the right of 152. So this would be 90% or 0 0.90 to the right of 152. I'm going to shade just to the left though. Okay, So to the left if it's 90% this side it must be 10% this side or 0.10. Okay. Next I would want to project down from here, this graph here to our standardized graph. One there and one from the 160. And that's going to give me two z values which I'm going to call z1 for this one and we'll call this one z2. I've also got these areas in here which are going to be exactly the same as the ones above 0.01 and this one here 0.10 so just mark those in again. Now questions like this involve working backwards through your tables. We should be familiar with the transformation that takes any observed value from this graph to the z values here. We should be aware that any z value is equal to the observed value up here which we call y in this case minus the mean mu all divided by the standard deviation sigma. So where's this going now? Well let's just rule a line down here first of all. We know then from this result that z1, okay, we'll just put therefore z1 must be equal to its observed value, which is 160, minus the mean, mu, all over the standard deviation sigma. 
and I've got to get the value of z1. I don't know what it is, so therefore I can't really develop this equation much further. So how do we get the values of z1 and similarly z2 as well? Well, we've got to turn our attention to the inverse normal tables, which I've drawn up here. You should have a set of these tables in your formula book. Quite often you get a sketch something like this where it gives you the probability p of being more than a value of z which is to the right of zero. Now that would mean that according to these tables this area here to the right of z1 is 0.01. That's the value of p. And so I can see that that value is 2.3263. It's telling me that Z1 or 160 is 2.3263 standard deviations above the mean. Well, we can fill that in here. We can say, therefore, for Z1, 2.3263 must be equal to 160 minus mu all divided by sigma. Now, I'm going to prepare this for simultaneous equations. I'm going to multiply both sides by sigma. We always tend to do that in questions like this. So we're going to have 2.3263 sigma equals 160 minus mu. And I'll call that, say, equation 1. Now I'm going to turn to Z2. Now Z2 We'll just put also here. Also, Z2 would be equal to, through this formula here, the observed value that corresponds to Z2, which is 152, minus the mean, mu, all divided by the standard deviation, sigma. But what is Z2? Well, I know the area to the left of Z2 is 0 0.10, but that's no good here because I've only got areas to the right of a z value that is on the right of zero. Well, I can mirror this across to the other side and I can think of an area here, p value, an area being 0 0.10. And if you look in your tables, you'll see for 0 0.1000, 0, 0, 0, same thing as 0 0.10 you'll see you've got a z value of 1.2816. That would correspond to that value there. But remember, this is on the other side of zero. It's on the negative side. And so by symmetry, we know that therefore the z2 will be minus 1.2816. So take care there, minus two, uh, sorry, minus 1.2816. And that's going to be equal to 152 then minus the mean mu all divided by sigma. And again, I'm going to multiply both sides by sigma. And so therefore I get minus 1.2816 sigma equals 152 minus mu. And I'll call that equation 2. Okay, so I've got two simultaneous equations here now with my two unknowns, sigma and mu. And I can solve them quite easily, and the standard way of doing this now is to subtract the two equations. That will eliminate the mu, because they're exactly the same. So if I was to say here that we'll do equation one minus equation two, then what do we actually get? So we're going to have 2.3263 sigma minus minus 1.2816 sigma. So in other words, we end up adding these two values. And if you do that, you'll find you get 3.6079 sigma. And then you've got 160 minus 152, so that's equal to 8. Divide both sides by 3.6079, and you'll end up with, therefore, sigma equals 2. 2173 and so on. Okay, now that we've got that value, what we can do 
is simply substitute this back into either equation one or equation two. So I'm going to sub this value back into say equation one and rearrange one. So just say sub in one and rearrange. And uh, if we do that, then you can see that mu, if I add mu to both sides and subtract 2.3263 sigma, I end up with therefore mu equaling 160 minus 2.3263 times by sigma. So if you substitute sigma into there, okay, into this equation, you should check it out you'll find you end up with 154.841 and so on. So if we were to give, say, this value to three significant figures, that's going to be 155 to 3SF. And for sigma, well, sigma is going to equal 222 to three significant figures. So a bit squeezed in there, but I hope you can read that. And that's a typical way of how we go about solving questions like this, where we've got to find the value of mu and sigma for a normal distribution.